Hi, and welcome to Wednesday of Wayne. You know, a lot of people get hung up on God's plan and God's purpose, God's will for my life, and, and you, you may know someone, they love God with passion. They've got this attitude, I'm not gonna take one step forward. I don't wanna be out of God's will. I'm not gonna move forward till I know what I've gotta do. Well, guess what? They're never gonna move anywhere. God doesn't give us a blueprint for our life. He just gives us a small glimpse of our future. And he wants us to walk into that glimpse. And as we do that, he seems to reveal a little bit more for us. You see, there's a reason God doesn't give us the big blueprint for our life. Because we'd all do a Jonah and do a runner. We, we wouldn't be able to cope with the, the revelation of what he wants to do in us and through us. God wants you to stay close to him so, and trust him. Uh, a little bit like the Amazing Race. I don't know if you've ever seen that show on TV, but they race all over the world and they do challenges and eat foods. And, but whenever they complete a task, they get an envelope and they rip the envelope open and it gives them a hint on how to move to the next task. That's what God's will for, like for our life. He's progressively revealing to us what the next part of his purpose is for our lives. Listen to this. But these things I plan for you, this is Habakkuk, a prophet speaking, but these things I plan for you won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient, they will not be overdue by a single day. God wasn't late for Habakkuk, and he won't be late for you. His timing is perfect. God is always working. Now, sometimes we don't see his hand, but he's always working. And, and he can do more in five minutes than you can do in 50 years of your life. Now, I want to give you a hint. The purpose of God's will for your life, his plan for your life, is that you, bottom line, conform to the image of Christ. That's the big picture, conform to the image of Christ. And the process the, the, to get that happen and what it's going to look like, it's going to look different for you than what it's going to look like for me, and it's going to look different to the, someone else you might know as well. But ultimately, we become more like Christ and in the process God will do something in us and through us that will outlast our earthly existence. Just as all the waiting involved. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate waiting. I hate it with a passion. We think waiting is a waste of time. And yet the Bible says that we can redeem the time. You go, Wayne, how could I ever redeem the time? Well, here's something you could do to redeem the time. To start, cultivate the sermon. The sermon. A lot of opportunities are going to come your way. Learn to discern which doors to walk through and which doors to walk past. There's, 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 that way you'll avoid wasting a lot of your energy, your time, and your resource. We've got a limited supply of those three things. Uh, Paul said this, This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless at the day of Christ. Second thing, learn courage. After you learn discernment, learn courage. It's one thing to know which path to take. It's another thing to have the courage to actually get on that path. When I was young, there's a whole lot of us and we we're going to go to Bible college and serve God together. Two of us went. The others, they didn't have the courage to quit their job and let go of their security. Some we're going to have to let go of your security and trust God. Stepping out in faith despite your fear. That's what courage is all about. And finally, open the door for someone else. Once you get a glimpse of something God wants to do, we want to do it now. But you're not the only one waiting. Look around and you'll see other people and, and the door's already open for them, but they just need someone to come along and help them. So help them open their door as often as you can. Love other people, love open and open doors. Do that and God will put people in your life that'll do the same thing for you. Don't waste your waiting time. Now on Sunday night, I, I advertised that I was gonna go out in the streets of Brisbane and minister and help some people that were homeless. Uh, we fed 236 people on the streets of Brisbane Sunday night. I would say we fed Jesus 236 meals because Jesus said, as much as you do it to the least of these, you give them a glass of water, you give them some food, you give them a clove, it's as though you've done it to me. On Sunday, I'm gonna share some ways that we as a church can be generous and open some door for some others. And guess what? Our generosity is not really going to cost us anything. We've already got it and we want to get rid of it. Let's just channel it in a really positive direction. Hey, God bless. Looking forward to seeing you this weekend.